Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is on a 10 by 20 canvas, so one of those long canvases, and I'm going to show you how to paint this Easter bunny with lots of details in the background, lots of different flowers, and the rabbit itself is a little bit more detailed as well. I'm going to first go over the colors that I used for this painting. So we have Mars Black, Dioxazine Purple, Cad Yellow Medium Hue, Light Green Permanent, Light Pink, Quinacridone Magenta, Titanium White, Poker's Green Hue Permanent, and Neutral Gray Value 5. Of course, you can make your own gray if you don't have that gray. Another color I used was Light Blue Violet, and that's not pictured right now. As far as the brushes, I used a number 8 round, 3 quarter inch flat, 12 bright, which is like a half inch flat, and a number four round brush. Again, use whatever materials you have available. You don't have to use these exact brushes. We're gonna go ahead and get started. And so this is that 10 by 20 canvas. I'm gonna be turning it on its side a lot for this demonstration because it's kind of awkward to film with such a long form canvas, but um, just bear with me. So we're gonna do a very simple background first. We're gonna fill our entire canvas with color and we're gonna start with the light blue violet. So this is this pretty periwinkle kind of color. We're gonna load our three quarter flat in the light blue violet, no other color, just light blue violet, and start at the top. And we're doing all vertical strokes. So using your three quarter flat, you're just painting vertical strokes starting at the top. And we're gonna go down about a quarter to a third of the way down the canvas. It's okay to add a little bit of water to the brush as you're painting. Just try not to add too much water. The background is a relatively thin background. We're not doing multiple coats. We're not slapping on thick layers of paint. So when you get to about that third mark, I did to about a third, you want to go ahead and load your brush in titanium white without rinsing the brush. And then we're just blending that white up into the blue. It's going to look very streaky. That's kind of the point with this background. Um, we want to allow this sky to get very, very light as it goes towards the bottom. If you look at the finished results of this painting, there's a very kind of light area before it transitions to the grassy green area. And the top part of the sky is slightly darker. So that's kind of the effect we want to go for. We want to do this blended look, but only doing vertical strips. We're allowing that white to blend up into the blue, but not all the way up. So we want to go to about the two third mark. And then when you do, so it, it's kind of like I did three different sections of this. So when we're down to like the bottom part of the canvas, you want to make sure you add a lot of white in that area, all vertical strokes, or if you're painting horizontally like me, it would be horizontal strokes. Just make sure you're adding a lot of white in that area. It ends up being a very, very light blue. It's not supposed to be pure white because we still haven't rinsed that blue off the brush. So when we get to about the very bottom of the canvas, there's like maybe a five inch area, four to five inch area on the bottom. It doesn't have to be exact. We wanna go ahead and load our brush in the green. You don't need to rinse the brush off unless you have a lot of blue on the brush and you don't wanna really alter this color very much. Um, but I didn't rinse my brush yet. This is the light green permanent color. And we're gonna just kind of create the impression that there's grass in this area by not doing detailed grass strokes, but just by doing these vertical full width strokes. And they're just gently blending up into that white light blue area. In fact, I measured my final painting and it the green area goes up to approximately six inches. So if you want to kind of check to make sure you're going up about six inches, that's about how it needs to be. But honestly, if it's shorter than six or longer than six, it's fine. This is just the background of the painting. Um, and so our grass is just kind of like fading out up into the sky. You can see how I'm not making it completely consistent across, just kind of letting it kind of fade out and be very uneven and streaky towards the top. It's going to create kind of that grass line where it gives the impression that there's grass blades up in that area. Um, we want to go back and at the bottom of the painting, we want to make sure that's a little bit 
darker. And so we can do that by adding more of the green at the bottom, but we're also going to add the color Hooker's Green Hue Permanent to our palette, which is a darker green that we can use for that. So go ahead and load your palette with that color. And then go ahead and load the tip of your brush in that green. So we get a lot of dark green right there in the tip of the brush. And we're just gonna work right here in the bottom just kind of drag it up into the rest of the green. So that's gonna give that grassy area a little bit more of a shadowy, darker look. So up there, it's slightly gonna blend with the rest of that light green, like what mine is, but that's okay. Just keep adding some darker in there to make it look like it's darker and just kind of creates that streaky look as you drag it, the brush up. So just add that dark green on the very bottom area. That's it for the background. You're gonna need to let this dry before going on to the next step because the next step we will be using our template for the bunny or if you prefer, you can draw this template. You can look at the picture, the drawing part of the template and kind of draw it. Um, I found using the template easier for this because it's kind of an awkward canvas. It's longer. So to get the proportions right, we just, I found it easier just to use the template. So I have this resized for you to fit on the 10 by 20. You're gonna need to print it out on three sheets though and tape it together. So with that, we get that long bunny with his long kind of stretched ears and then kind of put it, position it so the bottom part of his body kind of lines up to the bottom edge of the canvas. You will have space above the ears. It's about three to four inches of space at the top and that's okay because we'll draw a butterfly up there. If you want to add other things up there, you can. But just place your graphite paper on your dry background and make sure the shiny side of the back of the graphite paper is facing the canvas. And you're just firmly tracing all of the lines and shapes of the rabbit. It's best to do these when the canvas is flat on the table. If you're working on an easel, it doesn't always come out as dark if you don't, if you do it on the easel. So you gotta do it flat on the surface so that you can see the design. And that's about how it shows up. If you like the design darker, you can go back and draw over your lines, but honestly, it does not need to be darker. The background's light enough to where we can see our lines very easily. So I have my palette loaded in neutral gray, value five, Mars black, and titanium white. So we're gonna use those three colors to paint our rabbit. So let's start with the white in the three quarter flat brush. So I'll be switching to the 12 bright uh, pretty soon because this flat brush gets kind of big for some of these areas. But I'm just gonna use this brush to start. And let's just start at the bottom. This is an easy part. Basically, this is the, the body part underneath the head and just painting it full width strokes, kind of stroking down. So just fill that entire area solid white. It's okay if there's not 100% coverage because there's gonna be multiple layers right here. Then before this dries, let's grab that gray and let's kind of establish the outer part. So if you look at the finished version, the outer, he's got like the white kind of fluffy tummy area, but then it's gray on the sides. So I'm just gonna establish that there's gray on the sides and I can just kind of blend that in with the rest. Again, first layer, it's not detailed. We don't have any fur texture or anything. It's just helping to get that first layer down. So let's go ahead and do the ears. Um, there's really no reason why I jumped to the ears instead of the head, which is kind of what I felt like doing next. So let's do those gray. The uh, ears are kind of a medium gray with some darker areas of gray in there as well. But again, using the three quarter flat is going to be kind of too big for this. So let's switch for, to the 12 bright brush. So that's also a flat brush, but it's a uh, lot smaller in width. So just using the tip of that brush and I'm outlining my ear to get that shape established. 
if you want to be creative and change the direction of these ears, you can you are allowed to alter the drawing. So maybe you want an ear kind of flopped over or going in a different angle to make it look unique. You are definitely welcome to do that. And so as I'm painting this in, I like to do this thing. I call it color variation. I don't even know if there's an official term for that. But I'm loading my brush in a teeny tiny bit of black. You don't want a lot of black for this. Just a teeny tiny bit. And that's going to kind of make your gray right here on the inner edge of that ear. We're letting that look a little bit shadowy now because we're letting that kind of blend with the rest of the gray. You can see what's happening when I'm adding that teeny bit of black in there, letting it gently blend with the gray and blending it up, using the full width of the brush for the, the larger part of the shape. But when I get to kind of the edge, I'm using more of that tip of the brush to really define that shape. So it's creating this varied gray color. And I'm not painting that inner part that's gonna be pink later, it's going around the inner part. Then, then I'm going to do the same thing to the other ear. Teeny tiny bit of black right there on the inner part, inner edge. Let that blend with the rest of the gray. And then go back and add the gray. So you don't need to rinse your brush between these colors as you're reloading your brush. It's okay that there's still a little bit, bit of black on my brush right now. It'll end up being little bits of dark shadowy color kind of here and there, just letting it blend gently on the canvas. I'm taking my time. And then we can grab some white. So I grabbed a teeny tiny bit of white to do kind of a lighter gray on the outer left part of his ear. And then on the inner part that's going to be closest to that pink area I did add a little bit of black for a little bit extra shadowy gray just right here so using the tip of the brush adding that little pop of black right there and then try not to over blend your gray so we have areas that are a little bit lighter areas that are a little bit darker of course, if you're simplifying this and you're a little bit intimidated by the blending thing, you can definitely just paint it all solid, the same kind of gray. So then I'm going to just kind of extend this down and to the bridge of his nose. So that's that area is gray. So basically, I'm just taking mostly just that neutral gray color and kind of contouring these strokes, just kind of going in the direction of that shape and then making sure the ears all blend smoothly down into the bridge area, the nose. So the rest of his face on the outside of that gray area is going to be more of a white color. But right here, just wanted to add a little bit of texture. So I went in with just a teeny tiny bit of white in there and did kind of these like expressive x style almost like i'm scribbling but you can see it just added more of that texture right there in his nose area versus just the kind of the flat color that it was i'm going to go ahead and load my palette with some more white and i'm going to not rinse my brush off for this because this is a white area but it's not pure solid stark titanium white there's still a teeny bit of gray in there but it still needs to be a lot brighter than the gray areas of our bunny so i didn't rinse my brush off for that reason so i can get that teeny pop of gray in there so all i did was just kind of load the brush on the tip of the brush and i outlined the bottom cheek area to get that shape kind of defined there's these two sort of circular rounded areas for the cheeks and to fill in the cheeks i did the same thing really short choppy kind of expressive strokes it's going to give that kind of fuzzy look in his cheeks and going around the nose so he's got that triangle shape that's going to be pink later let's not lose that shape so i went around it same with the eyes go around the eyes so you can use the tip of the brush to really kind of cut in and go around that shape use the tip of the brush to go around the bridge of his nose that gray kind of stripe area in the middle and do the same thing 
go around those eyes. And I'm loading my brush when I go back to reload it. It's just the white, but there's still a teeny bit of gray on my brush that just kind of shows up here and there. On the edges of the cheek, if you want to add a little bit of texture on the edges, just kind of drag your brush kind of outwards to make it go outside of that line. And then let's take that white and go down in his chest area right here. And just take that brush, drag it on the edges, go outside of that division line with that gray and the white meat. And to do this texture, I'm just taking this brush tip of it and just doing these kind of um, strokes that overlap each other, thick strokes. And then let's add a little bit of shadow underneath his mouth area. So actually a teeny tiny bit of black on my brush. And just right here, under his mouth, little teeny tiny pop of kind of a darker gray color. Gives that little bit of shadow right there. You can even use the tip of the brush to kind of outline that bottom line. A little bit of shadow on the left and the right, the gray area. I'm just dragging that brush down a little bit and it's kind of just blending with the rest of the paint. A little bit of fur texture so these kind of curved lines that go outside that line gives him that fuzzy look. Let's go ahead and rinse that 12 bright off and set it to the side and you're going to need the number four round brush next. We'll be using this round brush to do a lot of these details on the rabbit so let's go ahead and mix white with the light pink color. So about two parts light pink, one part white, does not have to be exact. And let's start painting the inner part of the rabbit's ears. So I'm doing that color variation thing again where when I go to reload, I grab pink, then might grab a little bit of white next time so that when those colors blend, we have this kind of like smooth blend of pink and there's some areas that are a little bit lighter. Inside the ear, for me, there was really no rhyme or reason what part's lighter, what part is darker. Just kind of let it blend and kind of do its thing. But I did kind of go outside my lines a little bit. You don't have to. If you want to stay inside the lines of where that template told you to paint, you can. I just don't like painting inside the lines when I do templates. I kind of just let that blend and kind of go outwards depending on how that painting is going for me. Um, same thing over here for the other ear. The light pink had little pops of white in there to kind of let that blend. A little bit of lighter color towards the top. Again, I'm kind of going outside the lines, kind of painting over some of that gray. Don't want to lose that shape. So our pink is not supposed to be blending with the gray. It is supposed to be its own shape and it's supposed to stand out. And then next I'm going to paint the nose. So the nose is the exact same color as the inner part of the ear. So that pink and a little bit of white on your number four round brush. So a little bit of pink, a little bit of white, and it's like a triangle shape, but it kind of curves over here. It might need to overlap part of the gray. And then I'm gonna leave that space open for the black so we can paint the inner part of his nostrils. And you don't even have to rinse your brush off to grab that little bit of black. Um, but I did like a little vertical line and then two little strokes that are curved for the inner part of his nose. And then we can do his mouth. So if you want to make the mouth bigger and more smiley, you can. I just made it kind of small. There's a little bit more extra paint right in the middle towards the bottom of the mouth and it just kind of curves up just slightly. 
For the eyes, you want to load a lot of black on your brush. Again, if your brush is overloaded, you can just go ahead and rinse all that pink off. But I'm just loading that black right there on the tip, and it's enough to get solid black. But we're just painting the oval shapes. These The eyes are right on the side of his head, and they're oval shapes that are slightly diagonal going outwards. So I did the one eye, and I'm going to do the second eye. Again, black right there on the tip of the brush. Just outline the shape of the eye and fill it in solid. And I'm going to let that dry a little bit before doing any other details with the eyes. I'm going to go ahead and rinse that off and add more white to my palette. I'm going to add some more texture and like a second coat of the white paint on his face area. But this is going to be done with the round brush. So we did this earlier with the flat brush. This is the round. Basically, just doing these like textured fur strokes. Just kind of dragging my brush outwards. And down here, it's going to kind of contour going this direction. So you're just kind of going in the direction of the shape. Your strokes are just kind of um, more expressive, kind of short, sort of choppy strokes. Let's go around his nose. And this is gonna create the second layer and also give it kind of that fuzzy fur look because the first layer was actually a super, super light gray. And this one, I'm just loading my brush in white. So because we have that under layer that's slightly gray, it's going to give us more of that fur texture look with that dark under layer. Up here, these little fur pieces kind of go in this direction, curved. If you want to go outside the lines a little bit, you can. So the eyes have had a time to dry a bit. If they're still soaking wet, don't do this step until they're for the most part dry, but we're gonna do the little highlight. So this is just the, still the number four round brush, titanium white, right there on the tip of the brush. The top highlight is a little bit longer, larger, like a little stroke. And the bottom highlight is just a little dot underneath. And both of those kind of go in the outward diagonal direction. Then I'm gonna go back and where his cheek is right here, I'm just gonna bring that up slightly so it barely, barely overlaps the bottom part of his eye. So right there, just a tiny curve that overlaps just the bottom part of the eye. I ended up dragging some of that black into that and it turned gray and that's okay. I just kind of let that blend in and let that gray be kind of fur texture instead. And then touched up the nose because some of that white from that second layer overlapped part of the nose. So I just kind of went back and touched that up. And then I went back with the black and did the eyelashes. The eyelashes were drawn from the template. If you want to use a much smaller brush for this or even a Sharpie or black paint pen, you can because those are very tiny lines and it's kind of a thick brush. But I used just the tip of the brush to get those thin lines. So I did the eyelashes. Next, I want to go in with a second coat of the gray area. So freshen my palette with the gray and I'll be using the round brush. So just like what we did with the white part of the face, I'm going to go back with the round brush and do the gray over this with not trying to cover everything in the first layer. So I'm doing the kind of contouring strokes, kind of short strokes going in the direction of that shape. It's going to kind of create the fur texture by doing that. And then there's not a whole lot of fur texture in the ears. I'm still going to let those strokes kind of go in the direction of that ear. You can add little bits of black in here to make some of this kind of darker on the edges. For the most part, this entire ear doesn't really need a second coat. I don't really want to mess up what I did in the first layer. But I'm just kind of really going in and right here on the top, I decided to blend some darker color on the tip of the ear. So towards the top, using the black and the gray to kind of blend. Same thing for this side. I made it just slightly darker at the top and I use that gray to kind of just blend down. I'm 
And then right here above his nose, I just want to make sure that that gray is really defined. So I kind of outline that top part of the nose and just kind of filled it in, some textured strokes. Make sure that it's all solid. None of that background is showing through any of the gray area. There might be a little bit of green showing through in the white area, but I thought that was fine. You can take a little bit of white, do like these little tiny pieces of kind of fur up here on the base of his ear. Very, very subtly adding this white in there letting that kind of gently blend with the gray. So that white, since it's contrasting with the gray, it's kind of creating that fur texture. Then I'm gonna take this white. So th this start part of the tutorial is a little advanced. If you don't wanna do this detailed fur texture, you don't have to, that's fine. But I'm just taking this white right here on the edges of the gray area and letting that kind of go outside the lines, creates a little bit of fur texture in that area. I can go in here, maybe there's some pieces kind of sticking up in between the ears. You don't want to make them kind of stick out too far, so they're still kind of going up in the direction of the shape, but they're only going outside of the lines a little bit. I took a little bit of that gray, and right here where it kind of divides from gray and white, few little kind of diagonal strokes sticking out and going over some of the white area but not by much and then went back with the white there's still a little bit of gray on my brush so it is creating some different variations so some of this area where a little bit of that green was still showing through I kind of went back over the second coat of that white to make sure it was all good coverage solid I'm just going back up here so there's not a lot of contrast in that area. Later on, I can show you how to add a little bit of dark on the edge of that to make that stand out because that's a lighter part of the background. I went back where his cheeks are and just kind of added second coat in that area down here. And then second coat down here in his chest area using these kind of curved thick strokes to create that fur texture. And then I did a little highlight right on the top of his nose, right here, white curved line. And then one last thing before I move on to the flower portion of this painting, I just wanna take white, just pure white right here, outline the outer part. This white is not touching any of that black, but it's just giving a, a nice outline on the outer part of the eye to really define that area. So now we are done with the detail of the rabbit. So the whiskers, I'm going to wait later. So I'm gonna do the flowers first since the whiskers are gonna be overlapping the flowers. We'll do the whiskers at the end and we'll add just a little bit more detail in the rabbit at the end. So we're gonna move on to the flower portion and I'm gonna show you all different kinds of flowers here. Let's start with the daisies. So daisies are pretty simple. Um, for the center part of the daisies, I use cadmium yellow medium hue and titanium white for the petals. And I did this almost exclusively with the number four round brush. So all the flowers are done with this round brush. And let's decide where our daisies are gonna be. So I did two yellow circles. I want one daisy over here. You're welcome to follow me exactly with the placement of the flowers, or you can change the placement of the flowers. If you don't wanna do that many flowers, you don't have to, so this is, another part of the painting you can be super creative about. So I did one a little bit higher than the other. Um, the flowers are kind of symmetrical, but I still kind of made them different on each side. And then I do the petals. So daisy petals are narrow at the base and then they get wider and rounded on the edge. So on the base, I start pretty close to that circle, but I don't wanna drag yellow paint into the, the color of the petal. So start out with a thin, narrow petal shape, and then it gets wider. So you can put more pressure on the brush. When you put more pressure on the brush, it allows your petal to become more rounded. So a little bit thinner at first, pressure to get a rounded petal. And right here, same thing. So I decided that this flower 
is going to be on its side. So I'm not gonna make the petals go all the way around like I did with the daisy on the right. These ones, we just see the petals going down in the front. So right here, I'm not gonna make the petals go all the way around. Maybe one more that's kind of back here. So it makes it look like the petal or the daisy. We just see a side view of it. Then we can do the stem. So uh, you'll need this stem to stand out from the background. So you want a darker green, use more of that hooker's green hue permanent color and add a little bit of black to it. That's gonna make your green look darker. I added a little bit of water to that as well to thin the paint down. And because I'm gonna do a very thin line, it's easier when the paint is a little bit more loose. So that green is right there on the tip of the brush and I'm just dragging that thin line downwards to make the stem. And then for the leaf, you want to try to make a leaf that's pointed at the tip. So start with a little bit pressure on the brush and then stroke down and then press harder on the brush and that's gonna make your leaf thicker. So I'll kind of demonstrate this again. Little thin line for the leaf. Press very lightly at first for the tip of the leaf and then press down on your brush and that's gonna make your leaf go thicker. I will be demonstrating tulips next. So this is quinacridone magenta and you'll need a clean brush, mix about equal parts white with the quinacridone magenta. That's gonna make a lighter magenta color. We're gonna make three teardrop shapes. So a teardrop shape going outwards towards the left. For this one, I loaded my brush in a little bit extra magenta so it's darker. Teardrop shape that's overlapping the first teardrop shape going the opposite direction. And the third one, I added more white to my brush so that would be lighter. And this is a teardrop shape going straight up vertically. So that creates a very stylized, simplistic tulip shape. So do this again, teardrop shape going one way, kind of slanting to the left, and then change the color for the next teardrop shape. This one is slanting to the right. This is still that number four round brush, by the way. And then a teardrop shape with a different amount of color going in the center. These ended up being kind of small tulips. If you want the tulips to be bigger, you're welcome to make them bigger. And so I did two tulips over there on the right. I'm gonna do another tulip over here on the left. And you can play around with the colors if you want. You don't have to do it in this order. If you wanna do the center teardrop shape first and then the left and right ones, you can do it that way. So I did a total of three, three magenta tulips. Again, um, kind of going for an asymmetry thing. So I did two on one side, one on the other. And then I'm gonna load some more green on my palette and do the stem for the tulips. This is that darker green, the hooker's green hue permanent. I like to pinch my brush when I'm gonna do thin strokes that gathers all the bristles together. And then I wanna make sure that paint is loaded right there on the tip of the brush so that I can do these thin strokes. So tulip stems are kind of trumpeted out and overlap kind of the base of that center part of the tulip and then it goes very thin. So kind of trumpeted out, thin line that goes down. So these tulips are gonna be behind the daisies. I'm not gonna overlap any stems. This one's just kind of going out on the side. And then the tulip petals, very like the exact same technique I did with the daisy petals. So thin and then thick. Add a little yellow into that. That's gonna give that tulip petal or tulip leaf color, a little bit more of a yellow green color. So long leaf, very thin pressure at first and then thick, heavy pressure when you get to the bottom of the leaf. Next, let's do the pansies. So I use dioxazine purple. I love this pop of dark purple in this painting. I think it's so pretty. And then still number four round brush. 
So I'm going to really simplify these pansies um, and do these four petal shapes. So just like what we did with the tulips and we used white to kind of alter that purple, we're going to kind of do the same thing. So I'm doing very large rounded petals that are very, very close together. I'm going to do four petals and each petal has a different amount of purple and white to it. So one of those ended up being super bright. This one right here is kind of going behind the other ones. But just varying that white to purple proportion on your brush is going to let each petal stand out. And then I'll repeat that and do another pansy over here on the left. So we are overlapping our daisy stem and that's okay. Second petal has white on the brush and that petal stands out. Third petal, a little bit different, a kind of a medium purple, but I'm just letting that blend together. These, all these petals overlap each other. Add a little bit more purple to that petal. And then this one back here, we can add a little bit more white to that one so it stands out. Let those colors just kind of blend. Again, keep it very simple. So we have two four petaled pansy type of flowers. Um, when this dries, I'll add a little bit of yellow and a little pop of black in the center of it, but we gotta let that purple dry. It's a very thick coat of paint. And then another pansy was done over here on the right. This one is kind of going off the edge of the canvas. But same style, same technique. And it's that asymmetry thing I was talking about. Well, there's two on the right and one on the left. The next type of flower I'm gonna do is a lavender style flower. So this one is gonna be over here up high, higher than this tulip over here on the left. But same color combination, dioxazine purple, titanium white, and we're just loading a little bit of paint on the tip of the brush and I'm painting these short strokes forming this sort of vertical column of little petals and it's going diagonally and it's eventually just going to kind of go off the, to the side of the canvas but if you vary the amount of dark purple and white that you add to your brush it creates that color variation and lets those petals kind of stand out from each other and then there's these two yellow flowers that are much higher in the painting and they're kind of going upside down. I'm just gonna call these yellow bell flowers. So I use the cadmium yellow and I mixed white into it. So you wanna mix your white into your yellow because this is a darker part of the background of the sky. So just that one layer of yellow is not gonna make those stand out and be bright enough. Adding yellow to it will. So I did a center teardrop shape and I'm doing this upside down because I want this flower to look like it's hanging upside down so I turned my canvas upside down so I could paint it right side up but it's kind of the same technique as the tulip only the petals the teardrop shapes are kind of going out wider so I did one and then for the leaf part I used that green color hooker's green color the leaves are op overlapping part of the base and then that stem kind of curves to make it look like that flower is hanging upside down. Could do the stem for our lavender that's just going off the side of the canvas. One thing you want to keep in mind with these flowers is um, this is the background of the painting. They're not super detailed or super realistic. Really the focus of the painting is the rabbit and the flowers are just kind of an accent. So don't, don't get too... Um, detailed with the flowers. I mean, you can, but it's okay that they don't look real. It's okay that they're stylized and kind of loose. And so I'm going to do another kind of upside down yellow flower over here. Same thing. Each teardrop shape, these outer teardrop shapes are kind of stretched outwards a little bit more. And then I'll do the green leaf and stem thing. So grab that green. So one leaf over here, one leaf over here, and then our stem curves to make it look like it's hanging upside down. 
I'm going to go ahead and add a second coat of white to the daisy petals. So fresh titanium white. These daisy petals should be nice and bright. So that first coat, there's still some color showing through. I'm just going to go back and paint over exactly how that petal was painted with a second coat. And then on the center of our pansies, now that the purple has dried for the most part, grab yellow and white. So mix yellow and white together. It's going to make a really bright yellow color. And then just on the center part of our pansy, just kind of make this sort of starburst stroke. So in the center, just kind of stroke outwards. And that's going to provide a pop of yellow in the middle of your really pretty purple petal color. I'm gonna rinse my brush and do a yellow tulip over here on the right. So kind of in between where his eye is and where that daisy is. Same technique as the pink tulip. So use your white to differ or vary that yellow color. And then I did some very simple five petaled, very small flowers. So one, two, three, four, five petaled yellow. Gives that really pretty pop of yellow in this area. It almost looks like those pansies could be irises with that deep, dark kind of indigo purple color. A little tiny yellow flower over here on the edge. And then I know I've said this, but you can just paint different flowers. You can change this. You can add ones where I'm not adding them. You can change the colors. You can get inspired, look at like Google images of different kinds of wildflowers and add those kind of flowers. So this is just an example. So right here, I'm gonna do the stem. It's gotta be darker than the background to do the stem. Not all these flowers have to have stems that are showing. Sometimes too many stems might end up making it look a little busy. And then we don't have to do all flowers. We can do different kinds of leaves out as well. So I just did this kind of vining sort of leaf thing sticking out with a, a very thin kind of stem, but then there's small kind of elongated pointy leaves going out on the side. I'm gonna do another one that style over here on the left kind of lower area. So elongated pointy leaf, thin stem, and then more elongated pointy leaves. If you wanna do a little bit of grass texture, you can, although you don't have to, cause it already, the background already makes it look like there's grass. But if you wanna do some darker strokes in here, this is about two shades darker than that brighter, lighter green. So using more of that hooker's green hue, a little bit of water in it to thin it down. Just a few darker grass blades in there. It gives it more of that grass texture. Completely optional if you don't wanna do that. Now that we're done with the flowers, I'm going to show you how to do the whiskers on the rabbit so that our whiskers can overlap the flower area. This is the number eight round brush, and this is really the only time it shows up in this painting. This brush has a very, very small point to it, and it's useful for painting very thin lines. So I'm gonna load the brush in the water. It helps to pinch the bristles to make sure all those bristles are gathered together. Load just the tip of it in that black. We're not using the full uh, amount of bristles on this brush at all. Just the tip of it to get those thin lines. So start inside the cheek area and then quickly drag the brush outwards creates a very thin line for the whiskers and they will overlap our flower area and then at the base of some of those you can do a little dot but you don't have to do the dot each time so see how i did the little dot and then the whisker you can do it that way or you can paint the whisker first and then do the little dot on the base Some of our whiskers can overlap each other, that's fine. 
If you don't have this exact brush, a paint pen could possibly work for this or any kind of really tiny liner round brush would work as well. And then this is also optional, but right here I wanted to add just a little pop of kind of contrast in this area so this stands out. So with the gray, this is the number eight round brush and the gray on the brush and little small sort of fur lines just on the edge of that is going to create enough contrast to kind of let that stand out because it's against, it's a white color against a light color. And I'm just going back in and adding a little bit of gray texture kind of all on the edges of his cheeks. And then I did some very subtle fur texture on the edges of some parts of the ears. Again, the ears are not super furry, so we don't really need to do a whole lot, but I just took that gray and just on the edge, see right there, some of it's sticking out. And then center of the pansies, I did a very small black dot. Did not switch brushes or rinse brushes. This is still number eight in black, Mars black, right there in the center, a little dot. And I did that with the yellow flowers as well. And then we're gonna move on to the next detail of this painting. So there's a lot of space going on above his ears and we can add more flowers up there or vines or more leaves but I decided to add a butterfly up in this area. So I'm going to first draw this in with pencil before painting it in. It was just a regular pencil so I did the kind of a monarch style butterfly so like a kind of a heart shape for the top part of the wing but it's more curvy and then the bottom part of the wing is more of a teardrop shape. And then I did a very narrow oval for the body and then repeated the top and bottom wings for each side and the antennae. So that's way up there at the top of the painting. And then we're gonna do monarch style butterflies. We're gonna do orange. There's no orange on my color palette, but I can make orange. But before I make orange, I'm gonna paint the wings white because this is a darker part of the sky and orange and yellow are translucent colors and don't show up very well against dark backgrounds. So this is titanium white and I'm just painting the wings a solid coat of white first. And ideally you want that white to dry before going on to this next step, but I didn't let it dry all the way. So it ended up being more of a creamy orange color. So if you want this to be more of a really bright, dark orange color, let that white dry. So to make orange, let's mix quinacridone magenta with cadmium yellow medium hue. You need about three parts yellow to one part magenta because that magenta is dark and you don't need a lot of that reddish color to make the orange. You need more yellow in there. So, and then when you get your orange color, you just want to paint over your white so you can see that it ended up turning more of a creamy orange color for me. Um, but if you like that, you don't have to wait for your white to dry either. I'm just painting those shapes in. Kind of like how this white is creating some color variation in that orange. So both of those get painted in solid and then let's go ahead rinse our brush and do our black for the center part so Mars black 
Make sure the black is really on the tip of the brush. You can try twisting your brush because this is a very small area. So when you load, you can kind of twist the brush that gets that paint distributed right there on the tip. And then, so right here is that sort of very thin oval pointed shape. And then little tiny circle for the head. Little tiny line going down from that first shape. And then I can start doing some of the pattern work on the edges of the wing. So on the outer part, I'm not painting over any of the orange part. I'm painting on the outer part, kind of extending that wing. So I did a black outline on the outer part of the wing right here. It does have to overlap part of that orange. Same thing with right here. I'm trying to make it symmetrical on each side. So line, the painting on the outer part right here is black. And then a very thin line on the outer part. And a very thin line on this outer part. And then the same thing down here, kind of a thick curved line on the bottom part over here, but not painting over the orange, it's on the outer part. And then thin line outlining that shape. And then when you start doing the inner design part of your butterfly, you wanna wait for the orange to dry, but I did not wait for this to dry, so it ended up kind of um, being a little bit smudgy. So here is, because this is a small butterfly, you don't have to do be it super realistic. You can be loose with these little vein designs on the wings. So I did kind of a curved line at the top and then these three kind of curved lines going down. Curve. And this part over here on the left, a little curve. And then little diagonal lines going out from that curve. Same thing right here. And then little antennae. Again, really twist the brush for these thin lines so the edge of the antennae, little thick, two little oval shapes, then a very, very thin line that kind of curves. And then let's rinse all that black off the brush and we can do the little white dots that are on parts of the black. So rinse, kind of wipe the brush off and grab white just on the tip of the brush. We're just gonna do little dots. So we can start down here. The three little dots down here at the base, overlapping the black, and then little white dots that are overlapping the black border. Tiny, tiny dots right there on the edge of the wings. So that's it for the butterfly. Um, we still have some space up there at the top that I kind of decided to fill in some more things. So I did this kind of vine thing. So I used the green. There's still white on my brush, by the way. So there's white, a little bit of water to my brush to kind of thin this down. So green, yellow, a little bit of white, kind of makes this light spring green. And then, so up here, did this kind of vine thing that ended up being kind of, so kind of curved down. It's kind of maybe like a rounded leaf thing. And then up here, it's kind of swirl vine, kind of rounded at the tip. So up here we can do another swirl thing kind of fills that area a little bit more. If you want to do more vines, you can. If you want to do maybe another butterfly up there, another bee, or maybe we can just enjoy some of that blank space up there since the rest of the painting has so many details. I'll do another vine that's over here, left, kind of swirling the other way. But that is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint a floral Easter bunny painting. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.